can't wait for dinner? I mean, he could pop on. I mean, what I'm doing is like what we already discussed, you know, like still just be up here while we're waiting for him to, to pop in. You know, like interacting with people, I guess you could say. I got gotcha. you. It's, it's better to let them let them see us versus like, they'd be like, where y'all at? Because you know, they be inboxing. Yeah, I know they be inboxing you. <clears throat> you got the notification. I mean, that's thing. Let me do my life. It's, it's better to let them, let them see us versus Look at me. like, they be like, wait. Well, Every time I restart my thing, my value always come automatically back on. I want to be bright. What is this doing? My 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 tablet has a a, a mind of its own. Uh, good evening, Ken. <laughs> oh, there you go. Like he should be popping in. Right? Hi, everyone. Hey, hey. What's up with it? All right, so. Hi. Do you know where this is from? Of if of course. I've had the honor. I've look, had the look. honor of meeting. Look, with oh with yeah. Asia. Oh, I forgot about that. Yeah. Courtney, this is a great, this is a great game. Courtney is <laughs> going to start doing this. Like every time she's going to have a different background and y'all got to guess like, where is it from? And then like the person who guessed where it's from, I don't know, you'll get something like a, a Chick-fil-A or a Burger King gift card. <laughs> so Courtney, this is like. Yeah, we should do that. That'd be cute. Yeah, that'd be dope. All right, so everyone is here. I'm gonna start searching for real, like real. Oh, no. <laughs> look at that. Look, Kim got it. <laughs> okay, uh, we'll get you <laughs> coffee and donuts. You know, coffee and donuts. All right, so hi everyone. Oh. I'm Ashley Monique. I don't know if Ashley's yummy tummy. Uh, make sure you go follow the Ashley's yummy tummy Facebook page. Uh, Ashley's Yummy Tummy Catering. Also, uh, the website, you can order sauces off the website. Uh, follow the I've Noticed Facebook page. You can also listen to the content if you're not able to catch it live. And you can always go back and re-listen to it or re-watch it on YouTube. Ashley's Yummy Tummy on YouTube. I listen to it on uh, what Pandora, Spotify, Amazon Music, and one more place. I can iHeartRadio. Working on, still waiting to get approved on some other sites as well. All right, um, we're gonna it, we have a very special guest here. I'm gonna let you let her uh, let you know her background and every all the services that she offered and everything. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Hello, hello. Good evening, everybody watching. Um, first of all, my name is Jacqueline Hayes. Um, Native American, South Carolina. I'm also a licensed esthetician. I'm located in South Carolina and I also am licensed in North Carolina. Um, I also travel, so I'm a mobile esthetician as well. Um, I do facial, makeup, skincare, waxing, whatever you need, I do it. Um, you can follow me here on Facebook at Jacqueline Hayes, uh, well, Jacqueline Narciso Hayes. And then I also have Instagram, and that's my business page, and it's uh, queen.narc1. And, oh, I forgot to mention my business name. It's Queen Narcissus Aesthetics. So, yeah. I okay. definitely need to come see you, because I got some black hair right, right that's here. What that's why I, look, I'm yeah. so excited to have her up here, because it's not like she's a stranger or anything. First off, we went to school together. But also, <laughs> I am a customer of hers, and I felt like it's really important to bring her up here, because... I'm a big girl, and she makes you feel very comfortable, and her her place is clean. 
Um, she's located here in Marion. You know, this is a small town, so we don't have stuff like that. So I really want everybody to go support her. Um, you know. Also, can I add one thing? My salon is state of South Carolina. I'm, a, you know, insured. You know, all of that. So all her paperwork is legit. You know, it's legit. She's she's good. You know, um, but I don't think like you'll have any problems. I got my my eyebrows done from her. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. I also do micro shading brows. Yeah, and she like I love her because she invested in herself. Like everybody, people that know me, like I love. I'm 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 a little hood with it, you know. Sometimes you got to do what you got to do. You got to trap out the band though. Sometimes that's the house, you know. You, you do that, but then when you get the way you need to be financially, or even if you ain't got it financially, you you, you be like. We, I come from the phrase of robbing Peter to pay Paul, meaning you can't pay your whole lot bill. It might be 300. You're just going to pay 150 to keep it on. You take the other 150 and invest into something that's going to flip and make it more. So I love the fact that she uh, invested in herself. She still is investing in herself, like learning uh, new things uh, to add to her portfolio, her, her work portfolio. So whenever you come to her, you know, she'll be able to do it uh, the right way. Um, you know, so I love that about her. But also, the other guests, get the co-hosts, uh, you guys introduce yourself and let you know, let everyone know that is new watching or who will be new watching this because we have a new guest here, a new special guest, a uh, co-host. Uh, where can they follow you at and what you do? Ladies first. <laughs> Ladies first. He's such a gentleman. Such um, I'm Courtney. Um, you can follow me. You can follow me on IG at Full Court. Or you can follow me on Twitter at Full Court Leo. I still need to check that. I think it's Full Court Leo. Um, like Ashley said, a couple of episodes. I don't have nothing going on right now, but just bear with me. Uh, she's, a, she's an Instagram model. She's a Facebook model. No, I'm not. Book her. She Book is her. though. I'm her manager. Book her. <laughs> now, if somebody do try to book her. You gonna handle it? Call her out. Flew her out. I want her to be flewed out. Okay. And she need an extra ticket for me. I mind my business in the hotel. I'm hot tub shorty. Everybody know that I love a hot tub, you know. Well, flew her out. Flew her out. Flew her out. So, Mr. I Am Rhythm. What's going on, everybody? I go by Daniel. Uh, a lot of people know me as Rhythm. Um, you can follow me on Instagram at I underscore am underscore rhythm. That is R-H-Y-T-H-Y-M. And you can follow me on the same thing on TikTok. Oh, no. Yeah, that's it. All right, so those of you are um, our, we, we need a name for like the people that uh, that that always tuning in that support us or whatever. Courtney, we need to come up with a name. Like, you know how people got, um, like Rihanna got the Navy, Beyonce got the Beehive. Oh, yeah. So yeah we we yeah, need a name yeah, for y'all yeah. because y'all be supporting us. The like, nosy neighbor? No, I'm playing. <laughs> <laughs> y'all be supporting us. Like, I, like I said, y'all be tagging me um and stuff that y'all feel like oh this would be a great topic to talk about um y'all be sharing stuff and i know even if y'all don't share i know y'all be uh talking about it it's, it's within the city because when i go someplace they're like oh yeah da, da, da. love what you're doing so i appreciate the support and it's only gonna get bigger and better from here like for real for real you know i want to go on tour like look at us like kind of like the 85 south type thing you know i guess a little bit or like the joe budden or you know it's Y'all know if I if I touch it, it's gonna be blessed for sure, for sure. And then of course we got these amazing co-hosts and special guests. Um, and then also if you want to be a guest up here, inbox me. Let me know. Um, you don't necessarily have to have something quote unquote going on. Um, it's just the fact of your opinion, how you think about stuff. Um, I'm really excited about the special guest next week because I already know it's on. Yeah. But all right, so uh, Whitney isn't here. Uh, she probably will be watching in the comment section. I'll comment if she can. Um, but also follow Whitney, Miss Whitney Williams. Uh, her personal information. Um, she has the Polish Gym blog. Follow that. Um, if you watch any of our previous content, she's up there. But I also tag her so you can also click on it and and look at her stuff. And then Miss Kiki. Uh, I don't know where she at. Quiet with her, so I don't know where she at. You're, I told y'all she has become the Beyonce of the group. She's no longer Kelly. You know, uh, she's just, she pops in and pops out, you know. But um, wherever you at, Kiki, we praying for you, my sister. 
All right, so let's get into this. All right, I'm excited about the topics and whatnot. All right, the first one is the phrase, uh, there's somebody for everybody. Do you believe that God created someone, someone for everyone, someone for you, or will we just have to settle? And the reason why I kind of came up with that is because, you know, I think most of us are single except for Miss Jacqueline, you know. She's been blessed. You know, we're trying to get, we're trying to get, you know, but we struck. So we've heard, I know y'all grew up here, like there's somebody for everybody, but I don't think that's true. It's, I, I just think at, at some point you're just going to have to be like, fuck it. And just be like, you know what? Y'all know my biggest thing is teeth. Like, I'm just going to be like, fuck it. He got teeth. Come on, bring your ass on. Like, come on, you know, like I... <laughs> I don't really think there's somebody for everybody. I think we're going to have to eventually just settle for someone. And then you don't necessarily have to settle. You could just be like, you know what? I'm good. Because you also heard the phrase, I'll do bad by myself, you know. And sometimes you just don't want to be bothered. So we're going to let the special guest here, special guest co-host, what do you what do you think about that topic? Like, do you think that there's somebody for everybody? Or men and women sometimes may just have to settle. You're talking to me? Yes. Oh, <laughs> I thought it was a delay. I, that's why I was. I thought it was too. <laughs> I thought it was too. <laughs> uh, you know, okay. But yeah, um, I I think there is somebody for everybody. Um, it just depends on the person. I mean, but no, I don't think you should ever settle. Period. You know, you should always, you know, strive to be better. You know, but I, you know, I do think that there may be somebody for everybody. It's just, I don't know. It, it could go either way. You know what I mean? Maybe not in a relationship, but there's somebody for you, you know, as far as there. You know what I mean? It's just, I don't know. It, it depends. Okay. Courtney? Um, so I think, I don't necessarily, well, I think we all have soulmates, but I don't think they always come in the form as like a romantic relationship. I think they can come in any type of form. Like, I think my best friend is my soulmate, right? But that's never going to be anything romantic or nothing like that. Um, but I think she's my soulmate. I think as far as like romantic relationships goes and like people that you, you know, want to spend the rest of your life with in that manner, I don't think there's necessarily a soulmate. I think that there's people that, <laughs> there's people that you, not, what is the word I'm trying to say? There's people that you uh, are attracted to, not attracted like when you migrate to someone or when you are interested or you, I can't say that. I don't know what the word it is. Can someone help me? Y'all know? <laughs> Gravitation? Like gravitating to somebody? Like I think you gravitate to people more than others. And I think you can choose whether to make it work or not. I don't think there's necessarily soulmates. That, like, I don't think you're the person that you're with is necessarily your soulmate. I think that you gravitate to certain people more than others, and then you can choose to make it work or not, depending on however that works out. Well, that's Does different. That I mean, well, because now you, you, you're you introducing something different to what I was brought up on listening to, which is, because when you said you think your best friend is your soulmate, but not on a romantic level, I thought soulmate was the person who you're destined to be with. That's the way society make it see okay well i'm learning something new. yeah i know that when i know that when naturally when you hear the word soulmate that's what you think yeah. of the person that you're going to be with the rest of your life that year you're going to get but i don't think it necessarily has to mean that type of person um i agree with that because i don't know if i will ever be on the same i don't know if i'll ever be on the same wavelength as me and my best friend with another with, with the guy you know what i mean like i don't know how to explain but um yeah. I just don't think that it has to like be. everybody that's watching like have y'all I've never heard that before like so Daniel that's that you that's familiar with you like you have also heard that a soulmate doesn't necessarily have to be like a person that you're like romantically involved with absolutely not absolutely okay. not I I honestly I actually just had this conversation the other day with a homeboy of mine because I believe like just like Courtney and her best friend, I believe one, I believe you can have multiple soulmates for different reasons. Oh, I do believe that. And um, I feel like like I my homeboy, that's my partner who's who's over the the uh 
the open mic that I'm with, I feel like he's like a soulmate on like a brother type of level. And I have another, like my best friend, I feel like is a soulmate on a brother type of level. You know what I'm saying? Um, so I definitely believe that it doesn't necessarily have to be a romantic thing to have your soulmate. I was also brought up on that. That's something I actually just learned. Uh, excuse me. I was also brought up on what you were talking about, Ashley. Well, like your soulmate should be your romantic partner and things yeah. of that nature. I've just learned that recently in my 20s. You know what I'm saying? Um, now, as far as the actual question of what you were asking, as far as like, um, is there somebody for everybody? I absolutely believe there's somebody for everybody. I believe that everybody is formulated. God formulates somebody for everybody. You know what I'm saying? I even wrote in a poem one day, like I believe when God was creating me in his hand, he had you in mind. I feel like he always has somebody in mind for you that is for you. Now, here's the kicker. <clears throat> what God can have for you, you can mess up. That's true. So he still gives us the power of free will. I said that on like three shows already. He still gives us the power of free will. So your soulmate, quote unquote, or that person that's for you, you can, you can mess up, or it might be what you expect. I like, and I've used you as an example, Ashley. It's not a jab at you, but your soulmate may not have the teeth that you want. <laughs> well, God wouldn't do me like that. No, it, God I, would not but it's do not. Me like it's that. not about how God would do you. That that's that's where that's where we not fail. Nothing at. but teeth, that's, Jesus. <laughs> that's where <laughs> we fail at, though, because it's like my soulmate is supposed to have everything I want, right. but he really just has everything you need. I need teeth. Uh, no, you don't. We don't need teeth. I'm not saying he's gonna be gumby. I'm just saying he his teeth. Oh, dentures! Not... Like he can pop them in and pop no, them out. No, I'm saying like his teeth might be a little crooked. It might not be as white as yours. Like you have very white teeth. I can see why you're you're asking for the things like teeth because you have nice teeth. Like his teeth I'm might not be. Teeth. But right, what I'm saying is he his teeth might not be as nice as yours. You get what I'm saying? But it, it's not necessarily it like we get we get settling confused with compromise. Right. Ooh, you're preaching, Daniel. We get settling I know this confused word. with compromise. I know compromise. <laughs> <laughs> but it's not just you. And I'm not talking about you. I'm talking yeah, about yeah, I get what you're saying. Like, yeah. You know, there's a lot of people like I know what I want and this, that, and right, the third. Right. And it's like I'm not gonna settle for less when it's like, okay, well, you know, a man that you're saying you want, you want him to have six figures, but the man that God has for you may be making seven or eight figures, but you don't want to give him a chance because he doesn't look the way you want him to look. You get what I'm saying? Yes. I will say this right here. Based off of what you just said. So y'all know I was, I, I, I'm going to say, use the, the word was past tense because right now I'm doing a detox of men. You know, I'm removing myself from the, uh, dating world you know because i'm focused on something right now and i don't need to be distracted okay so this guy that i was conversing with the first time I, I spoke with him you know it's like well hey what did you do what do you like what's your occupation he said he worked at a, a fast food restaurant and automatically i was like the fuck because he was 44 years old and in my head i was like i was like oh my god i just did it like with a reflex of like oh no what's wrong with you but right, that's a, right, exactly. And I think we have that built in. That's the automatic, aka a reflex. Like you just go, yeah. like, oh no, hell no. Because in my head, I'm like, and I'm, I know it also is based off of how you built as well. I'm like, 44, you a dishwasher. What the hell? You know, I just feel like there's more, you know. But also, I don't want to go into a situation having to, to build a man. Like, I don't, I don't want to do that, you know. Well, I'll, not, invest, I'll do some things but just, no because the reason why I say that because I don't want people to think like I'm just like turned off from it because I y'all know from previous episodes I put in the work I do what I need to do but the thing is the problem the roadblock is when you come in wanting to um enhance that man uh they feel like you're trying to change them you're trying to be their mama you're trying to you know so that's why I say I don't want to have to come in to build a man. I want you to already kind of be self-sufficient per se or, or doing something that you love. Because I one of the things I hate is bumping into a guy, a new guy, and he complains about his job. Oh, my God. He's like, I hate it. I hate it. I'm like, why Why are you continuously doing something that you hate? Like, right. I, I, don't, I don't get how you can wake up. And if anything, that will put me in a, de a depressive state of mind. Like, my mood would be all the way off. 
like getting into something that I hate, waking up and having to go someplace every day that I hate, you know. But as far as the compromising part, now let me let me uh, and let me interject real quick. Okay. There's there's I'm not how do I say this? I'm not saying like you compromise on everything. There's some things you got to stay on your ground on. You know what I'm saying? There's some things where it's just like, okay, this is a deal breaker or this is just set in stone, period. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I was saying something like to, to me, no disrespect to you, to me, I brought up the teeth thing because a teeth thing, unless she's like, you know, really jacked up, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like the teeth thing would be something that could be it worked out. Yeah, yeah right. like like the whole thing where if it the, the whole list thing, I know that's cliche, but if he got all the good qualities and then that one thing is throwing you off, you may have something to, you know what I'm saying, reevaluate. You I know? mean, behind the scenes, I, I, the, I, I mean, I just, you know, I'm just putting it out there that the, sprinkling in the atmosphere, you know, mm-hmm. tag your teeth, you know, just <laughs> if you are interested in me, be like, okay, well, I know I gotta, you know. Let me go get some that. dentures real quick. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, like, de- as far as deal breakers, like Courtney behind the scenes, you know, I just uh snapshot some stuff to her. Like, it was this guy. Like, I've never ran into this situation before, but I just realized a deal breaker for me yesterday, which is a guy who damn near had everything pretty much going on. Uh, but he said he don't want any more kids, and I was like, I can't do that. I, I was That's like, a deal breaker. I can't do that. I was like, because it's not fair to me. Like you already have kids and I don't have none at all. And of course y'all know I want children, you know, with the right person. I'm not pressed for it, but with the right person. But I was like, oh yeah, I can't. There's no need to even pursue this, continue this conversation because, and I'm, I'm, I'm out of the phase of, well, we can be friends. Like, no, the only way we can be friends is if like, uh, like dealing with Daniel, like he's a new person that I just met, but I would consider it like, you know, continue like we would be friends, but we social networking and you know everything. Like there's the something homie. beneficial there, you know. Mm-hmm. So if it's just like friend, I don't, I don't really care for that. Like I feel like we all networking, like we all can come come up from something. But all right, uh, so um, I think um, pretty much everybody agreed that there is somebody for everybody. I'm the only one that's kind of like mm, I don't, know. you know, eh, I got to settle, you know. Yeah. <laughs> all right so question number two okay uh well let's read Kim. okay ken says having multiple people you consider as soulmates give indication that a person is confused about what they want in their life so i feel multiple soulmates is bs uh i'm gonna address that real quick i think i think based off the the love soulmate i didn't realize like soulmate could be in the form of like friendship and people you know, you know i thought it was just more romantically like oh my god this is the person god created for me um i do feel like there are multiples all right because there's different stages in your life like you know you got your 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 puppy love your high school sweetheart then you got your college sweetheart and then when you're grown then you got the person who nine times out of ten that's the person who you end up being with so i this is just my number it's not written in stone but i feel like you could possibly have three soulmates possibly you know i'm gonna tell you why i disagree real quick and I, I don't want to tell you oh i'm sorry go ahead no no you good i read somewhere that technically like i don't know if it's statistically i don't know if that's the right word but technically you have seven soulmates in this world seven you have seven soulmates in this world and you also have seven people that look just like you in the world Oh, 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 I know it. I know the, uh, I know there's people that look like you. Cause let me tell you something. I don't know who this fat brown skin girl is that sing in a church, but let me tell you something. People think I sing in some church. I don't know who this, this lady is. I want to meet whoever. It I is know exactly who like. you're talking about. She's my Facebook friend. But somebody, they say I look like somebody in church. Cause I'm, I never forget. I was in, um, uh, Piglu, uh, uh, was it Piglu Wiggly? Piglu Wiggly, before it became like IG and all this other stuff. And I was down the aisle getting some uh something, some barbecue sauce, something, and somebody, some old lady touched. She said, "Baby, you you did that Sunday." I was like, "Did what? <laughs> I did what?" <laughs> but I don't know. It's some girl that looked like me. That I know sick. exactly who it is. I know exactly who you're talking about. She's from she's from Florence. I know exactly who you're talking about. Okay, well then, let me know yeah. who she is so I can. I got I bet you. It's, I, I bet it's going to be like, oh, I look like that girl. Wait. I got you. 
can I I want to address Kim real quick. I, I know I we gotta like go, but um, but yeah, you look like he her. said he said how can you how can you build with someone thinking about somebody else? So you missed the whole point of what we said. We literally literally said Kim, this uh, a soulmate is our our belief. Me and Courtney's belief is a soulmate does not necessarily have to be a romantic partner. A soulmate is not somebody you have to build with. A soulmate is somebody you connect with. It has nothing to do with build. You know what I'm saying? So that's the reason why I said that I believe I've had, I'm not trying to, I'm not no offense to anybody on this podcast who's watching, who is of the homosexual orientation. I'm not homosexual. I'm not trying to build with my homeboys, but I consider him a soulmate because he's been with me through certain experiences that nobody, that other people may not be able to handle. You know what I'm saying? We connect on a different level than what I, you know what I'm saying? Like you said, that's what- now because like yeah. i said y'all just introduced me to something a, a whole new definition of soulmate you know um so now it's making me think like just using my personal life uh it's making me think like one of my ex you know i was like f d n you know fuck that nigga you know but um <laughs> We, we have a connection, you know, and I thought because we broke up and we didn't get married or nothing like that, I was like, oh, clearly he wasn't the one. But now thinking to what you two are saying, like, we, I guess we were so, because we do have a, a connection and stuff, you know, call me. Um, But, you know, I don't know, but. Call me. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's all I want to put out there today. All right, that so I don't want to spend too much time on that because I know right. everybody got stuff to do. All right, so. All right, let's go on to the second one. Um, what are the rules slash boundaries for the opposite sex friends if you're in a relationship? Meaning, uh, what can't they do anymore since you're not single? Or what rules you have for your own, your partner's friends? Um, uh, for example, uh, the reason why this question kind of came up is because in my dating phase, uh, a guy that I was conversing with, he said that if we move in together, that my my male friends could not come over to my house to our home without him being there is that control do y'all consider that controlling or you see like oh okay well i get where he coming from well y'all ain't even in relationships but uh jacqueline how you feel about that what, what? i don't mean i don't have an opinion I mean, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but i would rather hear this from jacqueline and hear what her boundaries are since she is married definitely. right right I'm I'm definitely. Definitely. So, okay well um i would well matter it would have to be i would have to say like it would be a more of a respect thing like i don't have male friends oh, and okay. my husband he has female friends but i'm okay with that i don't care because i know my husband and i know you know what i mean and that's fine but i mean i really don't have any rules for him i mean because it's it's all about respect when it comes down to comes down to it so basically you're saying i'm not going to implement any rules but you know that like just don't he, you, you know what you're grown like don't i know and he knows so you right. know what I mean? so you know what i mean okay so then for me i feel i feel the same way you know what i'm saying it's i don't me personally i don't have a rule set for anybody that i'm in a relationship with because if i have to set rules that means i'm at i think you're going to disrespect me in the person in the first place you get what i'm saying um for me it's more it's more about trust you know and respect like like uh like the uh miss jacqueline said you know right. just don't do nothing to disrespect me make me look stupid um right. now i do i do uh i set boundaries for female friends when i'm in a relationship you know what I'm saying? Oh, okay. Don't, don't so you had a after. conversation with them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Like, no, because I'm not going to, I'm I'm not going to be rude and just like, oh, I get in relationships so and let me just act different. You know what I'm saying? I'm at least going to be like, okay, don't call me at the 10 o'clock. Don't oh. show up after a certain time. You know what I'm saying? Like, like pop, like pop ups. Don't pop ups, you know, things of that nature. Um, You know, we're going to, we're going to hang out with my lady comp like company if she oh, wants so to be there. Oh well, that's different. Like, so no more one on ones. No, 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 no. I don't I don't unless unless here's my thing. It's not about what she does. It's about what I do. You okay. know what I'm saying? Like I expect my woman to check me if I'm the one that's entertaining a certain situation. 
I, I'm a photographer. There's plenty of women that want their pictures taken. You know what I'm saying? I'm gonna let her, my lady know, this is where I'm going, this is where I'm gonna be. You're welcome to come. Or if you trust me, you don't got nothing to worry about. You know what I'm saying? Same thing for her. You know, she can do still what she wants to do as long as she respects me. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, to make to make sure that the only the only thing that's important for me is her comfortability. So if you don't necessarily feel comfortable with me doing a photo shoot with the lady by ourselves, you can come on. I'm still trying to make that money. So you exactly. can come. I, yeah, and, like you have to <laughs> You gotta have to reevaluate that kind of that relationship if she's trying to prevent you from making money right. out from her insecurity. Exactly. You know? Exactly. 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 Yeah, I, so, I would hope nobody wouldn't do that. But then again, I'd be like, what kind of it has been a problem. Shoot? It has been a problem. Oh no, I mean it but it, But you're gonna know everything. You're gonna see the pictures. You gonna I'm gonna be with you while I'm editing. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I don't do that crazy stuff anyway. So it's like, like you're gonna know. Shoot. Yeah, no, you know what I'm in saying? In a bathroom with milk covering your nipples. Like. No, no, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah, that's just what it is for me. Like, I don't set, no, I set boundaries for my female friends. I don't set boundaries for my relationship because I expect you to respect me just like I'm going to respect you. Well, I'm going to play devil's advocate real quick. Oh, Jesus. Hey, I mean, this is just realistic. I mean, because <laughs> I'm, I'm realistically, I'm going to say something that a female friend would say, which is, because you got me on that, we can't do lunch or whatever by ourselves anymore. Because I would personally say, the fuck? Like, oh, now you got with this little lace front chick, and now you acting all stank. Boy, we're going to Chick-fil-A. Like, bring and, your ass on, you know. And you know what I'm going to say? I'm going to be like, look, either you respect me as a friend, or that we can't have this friendship. Because now, here's the thing. Now, if it's new, if the relationship is new, I'm talking about serious relationship now. I'm getting serious with this girl. But even if it's, it's like, serious, like, we still can't go to, like, okay, okay, you're on the podcast, right? So I'm like, okay, Daniel, uh, I'm in Florence. Meet me such and such. Like, we're going to sit down and talk, you know? Like, we can't do that by ourselves. Like, that's, still, that's still business, though. Okay. We still, we still talking business, though. Ain't nothing going to keep me from business. And if she she gonna have to understand that as well. But like I said, her comfortability, if she's uncomfortable with that, it's gonna be Ashley. Uh, I just wanna let you know I would I would love to bring my lady along. You know what I'm saying? We don't have to, like you know. Em. No. It don't really matter if you don't <laughs> like her, because I mean we do we talking business. No. <laughs> you can hate me and still need me. You know what I'm saying? I don't so, like <laughs> but that's just it's just a respect thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just a respect thing. And if you can't respect that as my friend and say, we going to Chick-fil-A, I don't care what you got to say, then you're not really my friend. Uh-uh, you don't want don't my do that. Happiness. Don't do that. Don't do that. You know what I'm no, saying? No, I am your friend. But don't you still going to, you still, what, what's most important? In, well, I got, the most important thing for me in friendship is your happiness. Right. You know okay. what I'm saying? Like, or, or my, my lady's happiness or, or their happiness. So if I'm your, if, if I'm your friend and you get in a relationship, right, and he doesn't feel comfortable with me and me coming to your house to fix your computer. You know I'm a nerd. I come to your house <laughs> to fix your computer. And he's like, like I'll, you know I'll pay Daniel for Geek Squad. Come on. Yeah, you know Daniel he'll be Geek like, Squad. He'll be like, nah, I want somebody else. I, you know, I don't really trust him. Just that and the third. You're going to be like, Daniel. Yeah, no. Listen, listen. <laughs> I've, I've had where uh, my male opposite friends, like, uh, guys been like, oh, no. He, I'm like, he's gay. Calm down. You know. <laughs> Like, Even that don't work no more sometimes. Uh, so you know what? Sometimes it don't. Well, if it honestly, with my situation, it does more. More it does. The only thing is they get disrespectful, which they be like, well, I ain't want to be around. No. I'm like, now that's where I draw the line. I'm like, well, if you can't handle that, then we don't need to be together because I got homosexual friends and I got homosexual family members and it's not, I'm not yeah. going to allow you to disrespect. Like, because when even when I'm just talking on the phone and a person uses the F word, or, you know, I don't even like to use when black people use the C word. You know, just don't use the C word. I'd rather you use, oh, you know. I had a slow moment. Yeah, I had a slow yeah, moment. Yeah, I'm like, I'd rather you say things. saltine than the C word. You know, our, our mayo, miracle whip. Call them miracle whip. Our health. You know. But um, I don't know. Yeah, but. All right. Uh, Courtney, how do you feel about it? Rules in, uh, uh, for your opposite sex, your partner. It's pretty much the same thing that Jacqueline was said. It's basically down to respect. I wouldn't have any rules besides what's already to be expected. Like, don't shoot on me. Don't sit there and entertain, you know, conversations like that. Like, it's just, I think it's common sense of, like, what's supposed to be those boundaries. So I, would, I don't think I would have to sit there and be like, 
this is what you're not supposed to do. <laughs> so, like, at, right. yeah, it's just right. common sense. Because if I got to say all you're that, you're assuming it's right. But we talk about that. I'm like, right, right, all right, all right. So, um, basically, I think everyone is saying, um, we shouldn't have to implement any rules in our relationship for your opposite sex friends. Use your common sense, you know. We just said let her in. She's gonna call in. Okay. All right. Go ahead, uh, Whitney. Come on in, Whitney. I don't even see her about she ain't popped up. All right, can you can you um she pop up? I don't even see you, Whitney. I don't see you in the guess what? My dumb self. <laughs> guess what I forgot to do? Hit the record button. Hey Daniel, are you able to like pull audio off of the uh, Facebook Live? Can you can you do that? Potentially, because I need audio in order to upload it on the uh, the things or whatever, like the podcast stuff. She said one minute, but it's understood doesn't have to. Right, right. Now that yeah, I agree with. What what's understood does not have to be explained, but yes, unfortunately, sir. some people. But common right, sense so ain't common. Is that true? All right, so. Let me hit the record while I'm here. But fuck it. All right. So while we're waiting on Whitney to come in, okay. So we're gonna go to question number three. Um, this is a scenario, and this is a real life. I don't just be pulling this stuff up, y'all. Like that's why I say this podcast is kind of based off my personal life. You know, a little. You know, a lot actually. All right. The scenario is married but separated. It don't matter how they separated, be it, you know, but they're married, they're still legally married, um, but a family member dies. And the, the situation was the guy is married. Oh, there's Whitney. Hold on. Uh, okay, so we're... <laughs> okay, so y'all... There's not no delay or anything. Whitney is currently tuning in, you know, um, uh, logging in. But while she's doing it, okay, so the situation was there's a married man. There's a married man, uh, but he's separated from his wife. He's still legally married. Yeah. But, hey. Hey, Whitney. Hey, Whitney. He, um, he is a family member of his dies, but... He want he's taking his uh it was said that it was disrespectful, but he he took his current girlfriend to the funeral. And then the family and the wife got mad because they was like, Why would you bring your girlfriend to the funeral when you still married and you know your wife and kids is gonna show up? And so I was like, That's his girlfriend. He's grieving. Isn't he supposed to take his girlfriend to the to the funeral? Like, so I'm confused. So like Help me understand. So was the guy wrong? Was the husband wrong for taking his current girlfriend to a cousin's or aunt's funeral, it, even though he knew that his wife and children yeah. were going to attend? It was his aunt's funeral or her aunt's funeral? His aunt's funeral. What, what you mean, like his wife's aunt or, or his aunt? Yeah. Oh, oh, guess who's showing up? Guess who's popping in? He's Nope. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Ken! <laughs> oh, but it's, uh... Don't y'all do that. Like, y'all give Ken a hard time. Everybody like... It's, um... Uh, it's, so it's... Oh, oh that's, okay. Patrice just said how long they've been separated. That's a great question. That's, that's a great, a great question. question. How long were they... How long were they separated? I, I don't know. I'm gonna say... Like a year or so. I'm not sure. I'm so not, they're technically I, legally separated, right? Like, you, when, do, when do you know a black person get legally separated? <laughs> I'm like, I'm like Ashley, did you already <laughs> say if it was his aunt or the girlfriend? Yeah, it, it's his aunt. It's his oh, aunt. His, his aunt. Oh, go ahead. Oh, no. Okay, so it's his aunt's funeral, but he's bringing his girlfriend his to the funeral. Girlfriend. Right. 
to the and then you know we pay respect so of course his wife his legal wife and children attend the funeral because they've been married they've been together for years so she's going to pay her respect she know his aunt you know so and it's her kid aunt yeah it's her kid kid. basically that's kid's great aunt so Jacqueline you're the guest so what do you think about that who's starting it up (laughs) I don't know. It just depends on how long they've been separated for one. And then for two, that's his aunt. So he can, you know. Do what he wants. But, yeah, basically. But it would be different <laughs> if her aunt, you know. But I don't know. I say he was, he was, he had every right to bring whoever he wanted to. He's grieving. You need to, you, everybody need that person to rub on and be like, it's okay, baby. It's, it's our, <laughs> you need that. I'm, I'm on the fence about it. Okay, what is it? Yeah. I'm on the fence about it because I feel like if they got mad, especially at a funeral, he had to know that they were going to feel some type of way. And that day, I get that he's grieving and it shouldn't be about them. It shouldn't be about, you know, saying goodbye to the aunt. However, it's like, I don't, I don't know. The only, the only thing, the only rebuttal I, I don't know. The only rebuttal I would have to that, Courtney, is just like I think the only I think that also what we we would have to take into consideration is how they separate, because that could also be the reason why they're gonna be mad at him anyway if he left. Can't hear you. You can't hear me. Yeah, there you go. You back in now? Okay, I I said that also. I was like, uh, was she the side chick? Was she the mistress? You know, and he was like, he was like. Okay, uh, Damon said, if I'm pronouncing it correct, he said, if my aunt passed, I'm bringing my girlfriend that that I'm serious with to the funeral. I wouldn't even think my ex-wife would come to the funeral, to be honest. I mean, well, she would come. To, you know, Black people, we pay our respect. Please don't come. No matter yeah. if they were actually separated or not. If they were yeah. separated, he, she would still come because that's just how that's just how it works. Like, you imagine your respect. Married, yeah, imagine you've been married to somebody for 20, 25 years or however long y'all been married. Like, whenever you if you get if you separate or even get divorced, like it just it doesn't just automatically cut off. Like there are still connections, kind of like how Ashley was saying about I'm a, I know this is probably like a little level under, but just like how you were saying how you connected with the guy, his mom. You know, just because two people separate doesn't mean necessarily that they cut off everybody in the family, especially if they've developed really good relationships with them. So, I mean, it wouldn't be surprising that something like that happened. Now, if it was something like the wife's or the, yeah, the wife's um, aunt passed and he was going to the funeral to show his respect because that was his kid's relative as well, it would be disrespectful for him to bring his girlfriend there. But, you know, with that being his his own relative, um, I mean, I don't think it's necessarily disrespectful, but again, I also wouldn't be separated with a girlfriend mistress, you know, (laughs) flaunting her all around town and doing whatever y'all doing. Like, that's just crazy. But, um, I I, mean, it's just going to bring who you want. I personally don't, I don't think it's disrespectful at all. I think, I think, I need to know, like, I need to know if he knew it was going to be a problem. You know what I mean? He didn't. He said he didn't, because he was like, he said after the, what, the repass, he said they a couple of the male cousins pull him to the side and say, bro, why, why you brought that girl here? You know you don't need to bring I'm like, because I was like, what's the problem? You're grieving. You're grieving. Even if it was his side chick, even if it was, they ain't together no, him and the wife ain't together no more. They, right. you know, I mean, it's over with. He with her. He lives with her. See, that's like, my thing, though. Y'all are, still, y'all are still married, though. Like, I mean, separate, like, I, 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 hey, I, yeah, I just don't I, think I like agree if, with that. if you're I separated, I, I can understand you're, you're separated. But if you're separated, you stay separated. You got a whole wife. You got a whole wife, I, mistress. Like that's just complicate things. Like, like people see you around and you bring in your little girlfriend. Everybody know you was there. And depending on who who you're with or who's talking, it's just like some people might not even know the depths of your relationship. So it's just like okay, such and such is married, but he brought a girlfriend. Like, they probably don't even know the whole story, but that just looks horrible to me. Well, my whole thing is, like, and and I I totally agree with that. Me, personally, I wouldn't have a girlfriend if I'm still legally married, but there's been some circumstances where I've seen, you know, I I have family members that have been separated and their spouse refuses to sign the papers. Oh, yeah, that's true. It's like, okay, well, I'm trying to move on with my life. 
we've been separated for, for two, you know, however long, like you not want to sign the papers, I'm still going to move on with my life until we really take this to court. So it's always, like you said, it always depends on the situation. As far as that situation, I don't see anything wrong with it. You know what I'm saying? If you're separated and it's been 365 days, okay, like, Let's not even put in the days in it. Like they're not together. Period. He's living. Well, no. If it's fresh, I would be like, uh, like if if the aunt died and they just separated a month ago, I'd be like, okay, bro. Well, then then I think that's on the woman then, because back to the previous question, using common sense. Right. right, I would say if I was his girlfriend, I was like, "Mm, babe, I'll be here when you get back. Like, cause I don't want no problems. You know, I don't. You know. Just using yeah. common sense. But then again, also at the same time, I am a woman where I'm like, oh, I'm gonna be there for my man. So, you know, they be, I'll just have my little mason and my taser and my possible, you know. <laughs> Not a taser. I mean, gotta light the ass up, you know. But uh sometimes you do what you just but uh Ken, you're up here. Uh what's your thoughts on that? Um yeah, with a situation like that. Regardless of what's going on, if if they're separated and they've gone their own ways, then whoever he or she chooses to bring, it's not like, you know, it was something like RSVP, are you coming to the wedding or not? They're coming to show their respects. And once they come and show their respects, it's not like they're trying to hang out with the person that they're separated with. They with their people. And nine times out of 10, they're going to show their respects and leave. If the family wants them to stay around and, you know, hang out and reminisce and stuff like that, that'll be totally on them. But it's like the person that they're bringing, if that person starts to feel a little uncomfortable being there, then it's up to that person to be like, hey, you know what I mean? If you're not feeling comfortable, we can go. But you've paid your respects. That's that's the way I see it. Yeah, that's what that's how I was, I I was like. Like people with funerals, because you know how you have people, you have, I feel like, and correct me if I'm wrong, or edit me if I'm wrong, you have two types of people that go to the funeral. Well, three. You got the nosy mo, you got the nosy motherfuckers, <laughs> slash hungry, you know, and then you got the people who want to pay respects, and then you got the people who, um, you want to see if you're what? really dead. <laughs> no. No, you got to. <laughs> You got to be cool, like, just genuinely there, like, you know, who, ah, listen, my thing is, okay, I will say this right here, using personal stuff, Um, when one of my family members passed, I think it was, I don't know if it was my grandma or my mom, but, like, my brother, it was multiple women there, I'll just say that, <laughs> like, and, listen, it was multiple women there. He had multiple girlfriends or either like he had one main girlfriend, but then you know how, you know how niggas is, you know, he's still dibbling and dabbling with other women, you know? And so they were feeling some type of way. And I just realized what, uh, maybe this is 21. So maybe like four months, maybe five months ago, my grandma passed in like 2017. My brother came over here and he was like, his current girlfriend, he was like, uh, she said you was trying to be funny at the repast. Like, I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? Something about a cake being smushed. Like, I said, you know what? That's why, that's one of the reasons why some people don't even like serving food after to, to, to strangers or whatever after the repast because it just be some funny business going on. And I was like, wait a minute. I said, hold up. So this is what, 20, so three, I said, you want to say something about this three years later? I was like, first of all, I don't even know her. I don't even know her. And why would I smush her cake? Why am I, why would I focus on one of your girlfriends at my grandmother's funeral? Like, so that was one person I'd be like, she didn't even have to come. And that's like, and I knew that there were like three women there that was linked to my brother. My God. Three women, but. I didn't have to say anything. Like, I'm the type of person where I, I cook, but like to keep my mind off of shit, you know? And so, but my, one of my cousins, two of my cousins was like, they know not to start no shit. Like, they was the bodyguards. They was like, I don't, we don't mind y'all being here. We know y'all knew our grandmother, but just don't start no shit. Won't be no shit, you know? So you got to have like those type of family members 
um, which I think he did say that there were some cousins there, not my brother, but the guy who I was conversing with that brought on this scenario. He was like, they was just there for like, oh God, I hope, you know, like female cousins, like just in case if the two women, you know, they could like separate them or whatever. But uh, yeah, I don't think it's a big deal. I think I looked at it as like grieving, like whoever you with at the time, if they got that day off or can request that day off, they go to the funeral with you. That's just what it is. So I agree. Mm. All right. So Whitney, have you made up your mind? Like, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, Courtney, you made up your mind yet? Like, she need to, she should have stayed her ass home or she could go with her boyfriend. Like, where, where you at with it? I think I decided since it was his aunt. <laughs> you still don't know. No, 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 no. I think because because it was his aunt and then plus he I guess he gen if he genuinely did not know it was going to be like an issue because I mean I think maybe sometimes I can be kind of uh, clueless or maybe naive sometimes where I'm like this ain't a problem like <laughs> <so> <laughs> maybe if if that was the case I think that is it's okay like especially since it was his aunt I think that's what I'm kind of wrapping my head around like it's his aunt he should have the right to bring whoever's going to help him go through it. And I think I'm kind of with Whitney when it's like, if it was her aunt, then that's like probably a whole different story. Right. Yeah, if it was her uh, aunt, I, he probably didn't even have to go. But then again, he should go because he was married to her. Or either just put some money, put the $20 in the card and, and the sympathy card and just lay it on the table. You know. It's 2021. Nobody ain't doing that. So people just showing up. No, some people ain't even going. Oh yeah. Oh, because well, they can't go because of the fifty. The fifty. Uh, no, no, no. Limit. I'm saying, even even if 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 um COVID wasn't even around right now, you have people that get so detached from that situation that you know they're like, okay, they passed away. I'm I'm not dealing with that family anymore, and they just don't go. Oh yeah, that is right. That's another topic, and I also want to talk about uh cremation and being buried buried and stuff. I want to talk about it. Too. I want to talk about that too. Yeah, I, I really want to talk about that. But okay, so let's go on to the fourth one. Um okay, so the fourth one is uh uh has been circling around the internet and stuff. So if Michael B. Jordan marries Lori Harvey, is that considering turning a hoe into a housewife? I got excited about that question. Is that because you'd be like, well, first off, what makes her a hoe? She ain't no hoe. Da, 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 da. She's just dating and living her life. But I wanna, I wanna the reason why I say that, and I'm not saying it personally, because I do believe you can do whatever you want to do. It's your body. Is is you can do whatever you want. However, I think what really I know Future is her biggest like blow up. Like, oh my god, who would date Future? All them kids. But I think what's what's making her considered like the whole thing is because of Diddy and Justin like the father and son like who runs through a father and son most people are hot some people are high-fiving her like you go girl that I know that's right you know but Jacqueline and I especially you go first what do you think about that um probably yeah but who's to say he's not a hoe either because we don't know about all the women that he done slept with so well we, we said that we was like first off we just surprised that he dated a black woman so, I mean, because he, that's true too. That's he's true. always being. He likes these, Daniel. Don't do that. Yeah, he, he, he's a, he's a salty really? lover. He does. Really? He does. Granted, he likes granted, wonderful there's, people? Nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. It's possible that he just gravitated towards those certain people, you know, those specific persons. But. That does well, you make know, we, well, we, 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 kind of We've kind of sprinkled on the topic of where um successful men do gravitate towards those women that they couldn't have or wasn't paying them no attention, you know, or they couldn't even get to if they was just a regular guy, you know. But um, you know, so but yeah, can I add something else on to that though? Yeah. yeah, at the past. I mean, right. I mean, who's to say she's it's kind of her present though. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I don't, this is, I don't, I ain't gonna lie. Well, 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 Jacqueline, answer that <laughs> question I, I past and present. Can you turn a hole into a housewife? Yes or no? It's, well, yes, you can. It's, okay. I guess, yeah, anything is possible. You know what I mean? It just takes the right person to change, and you gotta Absolutely. be Oh, you know, so you just, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. I, I, I think you could turn a hoe into a housewife because think about it. Most of the time, hoeing is based off of one or two things, money and love. And most of the time, most of the time, uh, the love part. <laughs> okay, well, pause real quick. Okay, Courtney says she has to leave. So do you want to drop your your um, your opinion or you just got to go ahead and go? Can um, you turn a hoe into a housewife? Okay, I'm just gonna leave with this. I don't want to hear nobody's responses because I already know what the guys in the comments are gonna say, and I probably already know what Kim's gonna say, and I ain't got time. Um, <laughs> first of all, we don't know that lady business. We don't know if she's been messing with everybody to begin with to call her a hoe. She could just be dating these people. Plus, why are all these successful men still dating her, knowing all this business is out there? So obviously, they know something that we don't. For one, and they want to try it out. Even if she was, or. A- or classified as a hoe. I mean, like like Jacqueline said, we don't know all his business. Maybe he just saved them post them. He could just be, and then Michael be joining. He could he has the caliber of women that he could have. Let's be real here. If you want to call her a hoe, we're gonna go ahead and call him a hoe. Let's right, just be maybe, real. So maybe they both making each other. Mm-hmm. I'm pretty huh? sure he's been a whore. Of course. Look, I mean he's been he's been named what the sexiest man alive or some shit like that. A couple times. I, agree I just Courtney. I just want to I, I, I agree with Courtney. I just I just want people to stop calling her a hoe because I'm like, y'all don't know this woman's business. And then for all that mess, like I just I don't know. I don't know. It's just for, for all these men to still be dating her, especially after because I mean it's not like they don't see the comments that us regular people out here are saying. For That's all these right, people Court. to say you're doing it and then people still talking and these men still dating her and like they know something that we don't. I just, I, I could be wrong. I could I be think nice. She's just, I she's probably like thing. the sweetest I person ever. Thing. I don't think she's sleeping with all these men. I think she's following her dad's advice. Granted, I don't believe in following Steve Harvey all the time, but I think she's following her, her dad's advice to multi-date <laughs> and, you know, do what she got to do. But on that note, I got to go. All right. See, see you next Sunday. See you next Sunday. All right. Oh, stay stay good. Good. Make sure y'all follow. Make sure y'all follow her on um, Instagram, Full Court C O R T. All right, so let me let me say, okay. So like I said, I think the whole thing is like two things: either financial or for love. And most of the time, when it comes to the love, it's like they automatically assume those women have daddy issues, you know. So I think it's possible to turn a whore, whore into a housewife if, like, like what Jacqueline was saying, if you could love her properly, him or her properly and you're giving them what they you fulfilling what they were missing you're fulfilling that void you're filling it up with the love that they always want or that their dad couldn't provide them or their mom couldn't provide them or you know sometimes people being foster care or orphans or whatever i think it's possible to turn a whore into a housewife uh, yeah. i mean really? husbands be whores all the time i mean they be in a uh, whole marriages and husbands done been ran through I'm talking the whole community. I'm talking, mm-hmm. I'm talking nasty. I'm talking all this stuff. And what do some of these women do? They say, oh, you know, I'm going to put that all behind us. This is my husband now. I don't care what he did in the past. You know, that's in the past. And what happens? They leave it in the past and they go on like the happy couple. So I don't understand if even if you did believe that Lori Harvey was a hoe and she got had with all these people. She for the streets. Well, you just you was with somebody from the streets. Cause obviously she, she must have been from the streets before Future got with her. So now all of a sudden that she ain't with him, she for the streets now. And another thing, now that Future is in a relationship with Des Dior, oh, everybody's God. like, oh, Future, you know this might be the one. You know she is, she changed yeah, the man. You know that. this might be the one for him. I'm like, so Des Dior just erased all the baby mamas and all the kids and all the whole ways that he had in the past. Just because she might be one now. So if that was the case, what if what if Michael B. Jordan, if if we want to say Lori is a whore, what what if he just say, well, she had her fun with it's time for me to wipe her up and do what I gotta do? Mm-hmm. Moving on. I do believe that people just hate to see it like that's why, like, and you don't I don't want to say they should keep it private because you can do whatever you want to do with your life. But once you like what Courtney says, because you know she don't like to put things on the internet. Once you post it, you're you're open to the public. You're allowing everybody to to interject their opinion into your life, your life, your lifestyle, or whatnot. Um, Ken, what do, what do you think about it? Right. No, I I, I don't think it's any situation <laughs> where 
where she's a whore or nothing like that. That's just a label society is putting out there. Look at look at um look at J Lo. Everybody J Lo was where she mm. she married them just so she wouldn't have that type of you know Statement. stuff said about her. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And then when you look at you looking at you looking at successfully rich people, right? And the way that's been modeled, it's been modeled by the soap operas. Shit, the soap operas. You had the 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 daddy dating the lady, and then next thing you know, the oh, lady yeah. is the is the All man in this circle. The, yeah, and then she starts to date that damn the son once they get. Up. I'm saying, you know, what I mean, really, it's just a situation where this lady is just living her life, and regardless of who she's been with or what she's done in private, that's totally her business. Um, when it comes down to her and her significant other talking about it, that's on them. You know, what I mean, they make their decision to that point. Because I heard one dude doing a skit, right? And he was asking his um girl, like, you know, we you know we've been together for a while. Let's have this conversation. How many people you been with? And she was like, Well, you asking me how many you been? He said fifty. And so she was like fifty. And then you know she she took that. You know, what I mean, she took that on the chin, like, Oh, okay. But then she says seven. And he was like, oh, my God, seven. Wow, seven. So it's a double standard. It's a double oh, yeah, standard. Sure. You know what I mean? So when it comes down to whatever a person chooses to do prior to meeting somebody else, it's what they got to deal with in their own private life. Okay. Um, Daniel? Um, I wrestled with this question since you sent it to me. Because, because of the stigma that that we're brought up under, you know, still does linger in your head no matter what, male or female. It's like, man, she she's getting into these committed relationships like one after the other, and it's kind of like, okay, shorty, what you doing? But the other side of me is more so like, like Courtney said, we don't know what you're doing. It doesn't necessarily mean your legs is open. You know what I'm oh, saying? I, I don't think that. And I think they, they know they have to wine and dine her first. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And for the funniest quote I ever, this, this, I'm probably going to get crucified for this, but the funniest quote I ever heard is just to answer your question, can you turn a hoe into a housewife? It said, uh, in South Carolina, sometimes you just got to find a hoe and ask her to stop. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's the funniest quote, but there's like some actual truth to that with some people. It is I mean, just like you can turn a hoe into a housewife if you do the right things. If you you just are the right person. Talking about the first question we did, is there somebody for everybody? She could be looking for that somebody in everybody until she finds that somebody. But you also said on the um on Friday uh episode, you was like women sometimes certain type of women looking to be saved though, you know, because a lot yeah, of men based, based off what you just said about in soccer, the quote you you said. About um soccer line, sometimes you find a hole and you just say, Can you can you please stop? You just know? stop, please. Uh, a lot of guys do that with strippers. Like instead of them going in there letting it be the entertainment, she dancing you on You don't have to do this. She getting all the, yeah, right. Boy, wanna, you don't like, gotta be like this. Yeah, like <laughs> let me take you. And he thinking she got daddy <laughs> issues and she wants, you know, nigga, she just sitting here trying to pay her tuition. Like she's trying to keep her lights on. Like, I mean, right. but if you want to take care of that for her, you know, okay, you know, but yeah so yeah. i just you know what i'm saying i ain't now nah, she i don't know i don't think yeah. i that, think that she whole just thing chilling. is gonna be done for a while that whole turn going to a half wise is gonna be done for it after a while yeah i, I agree too i agree with everybody that. gotta pass i mean are are, are some whole shit because even if like using what kids said the example like the guy had 50 but the girl only had seven that's a big like gap but guys I want to say it. guys are sometimes so petty they're gonna be like but how many dicks you suck though like like you'll be like what is and but it's all it's just society and that's the side of me like exactly. i hate to exactly. say it that's so one of my i don't downfalls. think it's gonna be done away with like guys are gonna huh. always like compare because like it's us women that say we're equal and you know well it's a double standard which it is true but true. Guys, guys are saying yeah but i'm a man remember when we had sean swamp on he was talking about the pole you know like you know yeah but we can uh, like pull down and you know like yeah but you still got to enter into that sanctuary like you still got to like so i don't think it's going away like guys are going to act like they're up here and they can still continue to do things and women are down here you know that's why i feel like women we shouldn't settle like no nah. yeah but all right let's go, like, on to the, oh, go ahead 
No, I was going to say, and like I said, then it will never make sense to me that the guys that say these things are the most tainted. They want such, such sacred things, but they've been with all of these women, but it's just like, oh no, when I get a girl, you know, she can't they be can't take through. what she they can't dish out. Street. She can't do this. She That's can't do this. Is. Like, bro, bro, you, a, you not about to take something so oh. pure and tainted and think that's supposed to be the way that it goes. No, you don't get that choice. Like, you don't get to say, oh, I want something so pure, but it's okay for me to be all, all nasty and slept with this person, that person, STD here, STD there, but you want somebody practically a virgin, only had one sex partner in a life. Like, what kind of sense and does that make? I'm going to say, say this right here, and the reason and why is they start because... talking, like, do they be thinking, like, does this even make sense, what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make sense. The, the, I'm gonna it. say something that all the fellas is probably watching is gonna be like you telling on us, but we just Bitch, can't we can't take can correct me if I'm wrong we can't take the same type of hurt that we dish out we just can't. <laughs> oh so yeah, that ain't nothing. The to, problem is you know that? the insecurities come from because men have been a whole a whore and them been in all these different things and had their own experiences. Now they're like, man, like I done did some dog stuff. So if I got if I if I meet a woman on that same level, that'd be like, I done did some dog stuff too. They ain't gonna be able to take that. And you know what it's I don't what understand? It Guys can cheat so many times, but when a woman cheat one time and he finds out. Oh, they go out, to cardiac arrest. Yeah, oh my you, God, I can't you, believe you did this to me. All I did oh. was jack him off one time. And you're gonna leave me? And you, but you want me to be a stepmother to this cross-eyed baby that you had with this bald head? Like, it don't make no Ashley. sense. Ashley. baby got to be cross-eyed. Don't bring the babies into this. Because the mama was cross-eyed, you know. Oh, my God. So, <laughs> I don't understand, like, the unrealistic pressures that men put on us. They be like, we, they want us to be these precious jewels, you know. They don't want nobody else. To, they want to be like, oh, that's my woman. I ain't worried about that. But, yeah, I got to go to Walmart and know that the cashier done slept with you. The bitch in the deli done slept with you. The bitch oh, that's God. stocking the canned goods done slept with you. Like, I, that's why I, I, I ain't. I, I, that, I'm telling you, they must think we won't use goods. They must be thinking we okay with just having somebody who done been with this person, that person. Like, oh, that's like that. Like, that's supposed to be fine. Like, so, like, some, you know, I have to ask, you know what? At this I, point, I, I got a reputation. Point, right. At this point, I want my men, like, I want my fruits and vegetables organic. Okay, I, now I don't want no extra. Like that's why I'm saying I'll take a mix a mid ugly dude and a cornball. I'll take it because I'm mean, nobody paying no attention but me probably in a couple. Just because he's a cornball don't mean he's ugly. I'm yes. a cornball and I'm cute. Oh well, we, okay, well, now you better say that. That's what I'm saying. But like most women <laughs> want the popular guys, the guys that's on yeah. the rims, the guys that's that's fine. They got the pretty eyes and the good hair. I, you know, I don't want nobody with no good hair. I, I don't need them problems. I don't. I don't need that. Our extra light skin, and I, I don't listen. I discriminate when it comes to fine men. You're not gonna get on that. <laughs> well, that's gonna we'll be, be a whole nother topic. You know, on that I know show, people, that's one topic for the whole night. That's gonna listen, be the whole be like, podcast. Who, who wanna date an ugly nigga? Me, <laughs> <laughs> me, <laughs> and I bet not have no problems with it either. I don't already <laughs> told you my thoughts on that. So. Let's go to the fifth topic because we got um Daniel has to go. Um, he has a, a performance tonight. Okay, well, I'm so, hosting an open mic tonight at Absalom Hookah Lounge in Florence. If you ain't doing nothing, I know you got to work in the morning, but come see me. Absalom Hookah Lounge, West 7th Street by the uh, Palmetto Sub. Sorry, I had to I had to sell that real quick. Plug, yeah, plug that. Matter of fact, you should put, put that in in the beginning. Plug it in. Like I recorded the damn thing, but I'm recording now. All right, so the <laughs> fifth and final que question is kids and sports. I thought this was very important. I don't have children, but I have Can't wait for this that, that, that play sports and stuff. So do you think kids need to get a participation trophy? Absolutely the reason, not. The reason why I say that is because, and I some people may say we're reaching with this, but I saw where um, when you keep giving kids these participation trophies just for showing up, that's something that they were supposed to do. They're supposed to come to practice. They're supposed to play. They're supposed to... So it turns into uh, them being adults and expect, expect the world as an adult when they're not earning that promotion. They're not earning what they want, like put, not putting in that work ethic. So Jacqueline, um, what do you think? No. What are they getting a trophy for? <laughs> 
you they setting those kids up for letdown because when you get old, people not gonna give you no trophy just for going, coming to work or you know what I mean. So no, no, let my baby. If they lose, okay, baby, be okay. You can <laughs> come back next year. We're gonna work on our skills and everything. But no, he don't need no trophy. So we need to give a so a participation trophy. Like if you have a team, a foot, I mean a, a football, basketball team, or whatever. So every kid would get a trophy just for being on the team. Just for being there. Yeah, no. Just for showing up. I think that's where the pizza party come in. Everybody ain't getting no trophy. You're going to have your little MVPs and the fastest this and the fastest that. Everybody just need to go to Pizza Hut and get their little gift bags and call it a day. They children. Like, you know, they just happy about the pizza. I don't I mean, think they just want cheese can I, can pizza. I, I mean, as they get older. I think as they get older, yeah, you don't want to give them a participation trophy because, uh, as you stated, you know, when they get older they're not going to get rewarded for just doing things that they're supposed to be doing but i think there's just always levels to certain things you know you think the little league team you know i feel like even though you have people i mean that's like in sports even though you don't have people who actually get any playing time when you win a championship i mean they still got a ring well yeah yeah so i mean like it doesn't I, i feel like if they're younger there, I don't see a problem with them just getting a participation trophy. I mean, because either way, I mean, they're still on the team. Either if they don't start, they don't play. I mean, I'm pretty sure they're doing something in practice. I mean, I'm pretty sure the, the, the star people have to have somebody to, to, to I don't know, to run some so, drills so or do what, something with. What, like, what so in level? some capacity. What grade level are you saying? Um, that, I that mean, the, 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 the little, the little I don't stop. know. I don't know. Let me see. So, like, because, you know, sixth grade is, ju- is middle school. So like Man, third grade, no, no. Before then, then, I'm talking like when they little. I'm talking about when they little five and five and six year old, like going on the cramp. Like I don't think there's anything <laughs> wrong with that. But like when you, I feel like maybe when you get to like Mm-mm. second Not- or third grade or something. So, like, can I go next? Something go like ahead. that. I'm gonna go tell ahead. you why I disagree. I'm gonna tell you a story. <laughs> okay, real quick story. So I was playing pee wee ball. All right, I was still living in the Pee-wee, Connecticut. Yeah, that's playing, it. When they in them college, them levels. Ball. I was playing peewee ball, okay? I was about seven years old. Now, it, it really technically wasn't pig because I was extra fat. So I had to play with 14-year-olds at seven years old, okay? <laughs> Here's the thing. We went undefeated, right? We went undefeated. I'm talking about I averaged. I was, I was playing good. Everybody was playing good. We won the championship. Get to the ceremony, and everybody got the same trophy as me. Oh, yeah. And I'm like, okay, hold on. Tell me it, it ain't even about the kids that lose for me. It made me not even want to work hard. Because if I'm, I'm working my tail off to win these games, I'm, I'm averaging like nine to ten tackles a game. Like, you can ask my mom. I had high schools trying to get them to move, like trying to get them to move. And I'm like, bro, if I'm doing all this and the people that win 0 and 12 get the same size trophy as me, why am I working? Why am I working this hard? Wait, you talking about the people on your team? No, I'm talking about the people. Like, she, I think the question is, like, the same people that lose every single game. When 0-12, we got 12 games, you ain't won one. Get the same size trophy as me? Get the same trophy as me? No. Uh-uh. I'm oh, working see, my I'm saying, right, So are you saying, are you saying if they gave you a bigger trophy? No, they shouldn't get nothing. No, okay. They shouldn't get nothing. That's my thing. Like, because the people that has won has, has are and they're not getting the recognition for their hard work and accomplishments. Not saying that the kids that well, lost see, that's, are not that's getting, different. Are that's not that's something work. different. Because what I'm thinking about is the people on your team who are just getting something for participating. Of well, course, I don't think the people. I don't, I, of course, I don't think if if you're playing, if you're if two teams are playing for in a championship game. One team wins. I don't think the other team should get something just because they played in the championship. But that's what game. happened. Like, that's what happened. Every year I played Pee Wee Ball. We went undefeated every year. And literally, they got the same kind of trophy just with a different name on it. And I'm like, so everybody gets a participation trophy. We didn't even get, of course, like the coach got a big trophy. But what's right. that mean to me? I'm seven years mm. old. I can't hold it. They ain't going to let us touch it. Uh, you know, uh, what Daniel, I'm Daniel, how old are you right now? 27. Okay, so I'm, I'm still mad. Twenty years. And that's what I'm getting at. So, coach, <laughs> if y'all seeing this, like, change this shit. You see what's happening to this young yeah, man, man here? Like, like he I'm is just, upset. I am mad. 
when you sent me this question, I was like, yeah, I'm ready for this. <laughs> <coughs> because I just, I, my thing is this, like, there's been times where we've lost. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, I still, yeah, we still got a participation trophy, but it didn't make me feel no better. At least me. Because we still lost the game. You know what I'm saying? And for me, like, my dad was like, this Bill's character. Losing Bill's character. You know what I'm saying? And that's what helped me be able to learn how to lose. And I think when you still get rewarded for something, when you lose, what are you learning? It's not building any character for me. That's that's why I think it's important to not only just to implement that thought strategy in the home, but it it needs to be done outside the home as well. That's why I came up with this, this topic and stuff. Because like you got these kids who are Cause there's still people who are friends now who play peewee ball together and, and share stuff on Facebook and you know the, the memories and stuff. You know, I think just all around you should still be um, implementing that because like now a lot of kids don't play outside not just because of the weather but they don't play outside. Everything is like virtual and games and stuff now. And so just step back and listen to when a kid loses. They tear that shit up. They are. Oh, they throw something there. They cuss and they fuck. You're like, it's just a game. Like, calm down, you know. But they just be all into it. And so, um, because I never forget when my brother we was playing Monopoly one time and uh landed on my brother landed on some property and then he had you know you got to pay pay the rent yeah. Oh my god, he I don't know what happened, but he just uh, my mama tore his ass up and made him pick up every piece of fake money and she said you gonna play again. You gonna play? She's like you ain't gonna win every time. You ain't, you're like sometimes you gonna have to pay. You sometimes you got to pay people, you know. But um, the main thing I, is for me is just being spoiled, man. That's just yeah, like, like yeah. You know what I'm saying? We quibbling. Different these levels kids. bring out different things. Different levels right. bring out different things. But I still, I just my opinion is you just we quibbling kids, man. Like you know, you know, you go there, you do terrible. Like you got to learn how to get better. It's just how it is, and you quibbling them, like. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? That's just me. That's just me. You know, I don't got kids, so people gonna be like, "We don't care what you think. You ain't got no kids." But so, like, what, so Whitney, let me ask you this right here. So, what do you think about the the parents that at the field they allow their child to get the participation trophy, but when they get home and or go to McDonald's and they talk about it and they say they said, "You know, I'm gonna have to take this from you because you did not <laughs> like they take it from them, but they implementing that lesson of why." you ain't really deserve this, you know, like, how, what do you think about that? Are you feel like you can have that conversation, but no way, they get, they, cause I know, I know moms that do that. Like they'd be like, you're not. So yeah. wait, so they get the kids, the kids get the, the kids get the trophy and they say, okay, yeah, they, they allow the kids to get the trophy at the, on the field at ceremony. But when they go home, they say, you didn't earn this, take it back. <laughs> yeah. They don't say it like that. They say it in a, 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 momly, a momly manner. They're like, well, you can keep it, but this is the thing, like, you didn't earn it. This is, you uh, need to, they, they implement, like, they teach them Teaching to let, them how to take an L. Yeah. Because give, basically what it is, moms are saying, moms and dad, well, mostly moms, moms are saying, when you give my child this trophy, you're making them seem like they are a winner. When they're not, they're right. not a winner. Right. And so whenever they're they're playing something or putting themselves in that position, they feel like they're always supposed to get, get, get. So they don't know how to lose <laughs> and be a good sportsman and walk away from like, okay, well, maybe next year or I need to work harder. Yeah, this is something to keep in mind. As kids are growing, there's always levels of teaching them. When they're, just imagine when you're teaching, teaching them how to write. You're teaching them your kids how to write. You get, they got A, B, C. They they you they they trace them they trace in the A they don't get the A you that A may look like a freaking I don't know a G or something but what do you do as a parent you say oh good job you know that doesn't look like an A but because they put in an effort or whatever the case may be it you're gonna still encourage them but what are you gonna do you're gonna say oh that was a good job but when you do your A you need to make sure you you curve you need to make sure you make a circle and like you teach them along the way. So I don't think it's 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 necessary for you to one that's 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 putting on two different faces. You gonna get out here on the field and make them feel all excited about getting this trophy and winning, and then they just all pumped up. And then you get home and just I mean, even if it's not in that manner, you right. get home and it's just like, no, you don't deserve that trophy. I'm gonna take it back away from you. 
you know, until you earn it, then you can get it back. You know, I yeah, just I'd rather don't just not get it at all. Think that's, you know, hey, I don't, I yeah, right. Yeah, just don't that, even, that, don't encourage that. When you talk about levels, like I know sports moms who kids are like in like the, the seventh, eighth grade that don't take the trophies. Like they already know because their their parents done groomed them or whatever, or educated them rather to know like we didn't. So they, no, I'm, I'm okay. You know, give me the trophy when, when I, when we do make the championship or something like that, you know? So there, so I, I've seen witness because like I had cousins, you know, that played soccer and baseball and all the other stuff. But mm-hmm. um, at first when they're younger, little kids, when they're cute, you know, they let them keep it. But then as they start growing up a little bit older, they take them to the McDonald's. It's like, you know, the McFlurry good. Is <laughs> Happy Meal good? Then they hold the truck, <laughs> you know? And of course the kid is like, no, that's mine. I mean, I, like, like, I, I mean, and, but I don't now understand, that, like, like I said, when they get older, school, like, yeah, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta, yeah, when you're like, getting older, you gotta learn that just, you know, just because somebody gave you a pat on the back, you know, if you ain't put in no word, that you didn't deserve that pat. They might have gave it to you, but you didn't deserve it. Like, as you well, get that's, older, that's what I do in my pastime is cool. Yeah. And they start to understand that. You know what I mean? Like, you can't just be saying stuff and they just wonder, like, dang, Eric, you know, my friends got trophies. They mom ain't said nothing, but for some reason I can't have mine. Like when they get to the level where they can understand, then I think it's okay for you just be like, hey, you know, you you got this, but you you know you got to work for it. You know, you got participation, but what did you do? What kind of effort and what kind of work did you put in to feel like you deserve this? And then you can start having conversations with them about that, you know, that type of things because at every level you are building certain skills or or building certain levels of confidence in them you know it starts with okay participation who knows maybe they got a participation trophy everybody got one but they might feel pumped like okay i might need to do better next year but then as they get older and realize when some of those those things are taken away they start to learn about what it is to have an advantage be competitive you need to be better you know you win and you lose if you're not winning then you're losing so once they get to that level then yeah, I, I agree with, you know, teaching them the value of things. And I think sometimes with sports moms or parents or whoever the case may be, just depending on who they are, like they are that hard on their kids. And, yeah, you know, right. although they raise uh, these kids and they and a lot of them become successful based off that, it's just like they have a hard time with failure. And, and I, you know, it could be a good thing and it could be a bad thing. Sometimes they don't know how to handle losing. And, you know, I understand, you know, you always want to win, yeah. win, win, win. But, you know, when you cre- when you plant that seed when they're younger, just like they're, it's almost like their best is never good enough. Like that really takes a toll on them. And like now they don't know how to lose. And when they, they might be sore. Uh-oh, did we lose her? Yeah, her thing freezing up. <laughs> okay, it's her come back up Ken uh, what's your, your thoughts on that and then we're going to exit out because I know Daniel got to go I know Jacqueline got to go what are your thoughts on it being that you are actually are, are, are currently a coach or did yeah, that's, that's I was I, a coach I, too I, that okay. I, co- I coach those <laughs> kids and the thing about it is is that when the kids get the participation trophy it's off of the coach you know teaching them throughout that season and with me, I taught my kids how to understand perseverance and mm-hmm. you know how to lose and stuff like that. So if they were things that they showed me and they did it throughout the season, I felt like they earned the trophy because from the first game where they get upset and they cry, and then the last game they actually stay in line and go touch hands and congratulate like the winning the team or yeah. whatever, they've learned. And, and 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 they've done, you know, they've 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 got that perseverance in them. Um, when it comes down to it, I break it down individually in my little team right. um, thing after the um, end of the season. Whoever was the most valuable player, then the whole teams knows who put in put it in. If there was a player that just didn't really meet the mold at the beginning, but they came down to the end and, you know, the team is cheering that one kid on that couldn't shoot a basketball, couldn't hit a baseball, and they cheering them up. Okay, they know that person got most improved and stuff like that. So Mm -hmm. it's up to the coach to teach the kids and also at the same time teach the parents because some of the parents take the fun out of the game. And we got to keep the kids with the fun in the game. And when it comes down to the participation um, trophies, now when you start getting the kid like maybe – maybe 12, 13 years old, 
now that participation trophy starts to go away because it's more of getting out here and performing more. Now with recreation, recreation is going to be more so on their parents has paid for them to play. And, you know, at the end of it, nine times out of 10, the parents are putting together the little get together to get the kids a little trophy, this and that or whatever. But at me as a coach, I set it up the way I want to set it up mm-hmm. in order to help teach them and, and get them to learn, you know, basically what this season was about. And now if they do it like that, then yeah, give them a participation trophy because they, you, you explain it to them what they learn because each coach should have an agenda on what they want to teach those kids throughout the season. I totally agree with that. I absolutely agree with yeah, that. I, I still would say though, like, cause it's my, like my opinion. Cause I, I, I probably haven't been coaching as long as you, but I have coached and we've done things like that, but it's still not a participation trophy to me. Like every trophy has a specific name. Like you said, most improved, most valuable player. Uh, this, this player had this many touchdowns, the most touchdowns in the league uh, in the, in the, on the team or something like that. But for the kids that show up and they don't want to do nothing, you know what I'm saying? You're not, what am I rewarding you for? You know what I'm saying? If you're there and you're not doing what you need to do as far as you just going through the motions. Okay. Well, you see, came here. I appreciate that's, that's you for coming. Thing, that, that's where it comes <laughs> in at right there. Just yeah. because the parent p- pays for them to play. And if they're not going to do the things that they need to do throughout the season to help right. the team. That's when I pull parents aside and say, hey, you know what? If they don't want to be here, don't Don't make them be here because that's bringing down the morale of the team. So at the end of the season, everybody that gets a trophy from me, they get a trophy because they put in that work. Yeah. Okay. I agree. Yeah, I definitely agree with that. Definitely agree with that. So we're going to wrap up this, this, uh, that question. So basically, uh, well, that topic, no participants, parents, guardians, no participation trophies perseverance trophies and awards you know uh break let's break it down you know because as you can see here 20 years later later daniel i'm still mad i'm still mad and there's a lot of kids that i'm pretty sure got these these behind the scenes stories like where are they now where are they (laughs) right yeah for sure but I, i would like to thank everybody um thank you for whitney for coming on when you could um, thank you, Ken, for always tuning in and finally making a guest appearance. You know, we might hey, be- let me say let me say one thing before you go off of that participation stuff. There was one kid that my uncle and I were coaching. And like I told my uncle, you know, that kid, he was young. He cursed my uncle out. My uncle was ready to kick him off the team. And I said, no, I said, you can't reach every kid. I said, let me deal with this one. And I'm proud to say that this kid has graduated high school, did what he needed to do. And he's now enrolled into the Navy. And that was off of, you know, Sometimes coaches are actually some of the ones that can reach kids when nobody else can. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's I to, absolutely. I used to tell parents all the time, their kids get in trouble, and they'd be like, I'm taking them out of football. He's bad in school. And I said, please don't take him out of football. Just let me deal yeah. with it. Yeah. Like, let me. He, he going to crab true. walk that's until true. he cry. He going he gonna, he gonna to duck walk until he, you know what I'm saying? Like, we going to get him right. There was just, I ain't going to hold you up, but there was one kid that was bad. I'm talking about fighting everybody. He was so bad got suspended from school 10 times in one year 10 mm. and I, I begged his mama please don't take him off please don't take him off that boy went from that to a b on in the next season a b on wow. never you got in to, trouble you have to give him something to look forward to because sometimes oh, yeah. like the academics and the behavior isn't and that that outlet is for them to get that you know i don't yeah. want to hurt my baby but you know to get that aggression off or whatever you know but um but um, that's the topic you. though we can, yeah, I'm a, you know, I'm gonna go back and watch this and pull from what we talked about. But thank you, um, Jacqueline. Make sure y'all go like her business page, book her for services. She is amazing, she's wonderful, and the prices are great. She always running specials, so make sure y'all follow her to um, see those specials. But um, thank you, Whitney. Can you say what it is one more time? Because I really need a face, yeah. Let, um, Jacqueline, let everybody know it's Queen Narcissus Aesthetics. I do uh, please spell that. <laughs> Queen and then Narcissus N A R C I S S U S Aesthetics S T H E T I C. 
So yeah. Can't see that. Travel. That was stupid. And she travels <laughs> and she's licensed and the prices are amazing. The environment is amazing. Um, I love what she did. Uh she turned a she shed into a business. Like it is Oh, that so, is so smart. Yes it is to so, that. It's possible. It is like so I just saw I saw something on um online once. It was a young kid. Um uh, well he wasn't a kid. He was like a teenager and he could cut hair really good. And his mom did oh, the same yeah. thing for him. She turned the um she shed into a barbershop. So he actually yep. has his own barbershop at home in the, ba- in the backyard. In the back, and you know that's saving so much money too. Like you own your own thing in your own area, and you can still have your business, save on expenses. Like that's such a smart thing to do. Yeah, nope. yep. The overhead is like super low. It yes. Is. yes, and I'm in locations. I'm in Marion, South Carolina, and Fayetteville, North Carolina. So, okay, you better. You better do it. And so, um, if you wasn't able to catch the um the the spelling, all you got to do is just go up there and click on her name, and everything is there. And then I'm also going to post it on the I've Noticed um, Facebook page. So make sure you like that as well. Thank y'all for um, showing up and our surprise guest, Ken. You know, um, there will be no after show tonight because people got shit to do, you know. (laughs) We will see y'all next Sunday with another special guest. And y'all, I'm excited about that special guest. I'm excited. Okay, well, stay on here, Ashley, because I want to. Okay. I'm about to say, I kind of want to know. <laughs> I, gotta, I know I gotta go, but I got. Okay, well, okay, well, let me. Okay, well, bye, y'all. Let me cut off the the, the record. Let me stop that. Let me stop the record. All right. Um. Look, I'm staying too because I want to know too. <laughs> well, basically. I'm, I'm okay, so. <laughs> well, basically, the, the guest, um, uh, Whitney, because I see he be liking your stuff a lot. Um, Lou. Lou Clemens. Oh, uh, Lou! Uh, my dog. See, the, the reason why, because see, I gotta dig a little deep with the questions with him because I don't know exactly what he. I don't know if he's like spiritual or, or Muslim or, or what it is. Like, I don't even know how to come about come asking him the question because I don't want to be disrespectful. But like, he's like, I like that he's more independent. Like, he's he's more of the. Uh, he said something the other day about. Do you want to make uh I don't know if you know, but you still alive. <laughs> no. 